Good morning and welcome to the celebration of Christmas at All Saints Episcopal Church in Concord, North Carolina. We are delighted to welcome you to our worship this day. You can learn more about All Saints at allsaintsconcord.org. Our worship is from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer and begins in the worship leaflet that accompanies this post or on page 361. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Praying together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born this day of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you in the same Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Paul's letter to Titus. The grace of God has appeared bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation 
of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Rejoice, rejoice, our Lord has done great things. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Christmas morning to each one of you. And let us rejoice this morning as we celebrate our loving God and the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. A God who came into this world in the lowliest of places in unexpected ways to say, I love you. I love you. Do not be afraid, my people. Accept my love. Accept all that is light and hope. Accept the words that I place on your heart this day and every day. I love you. And that that love will enter your heart and you will be changed and softened and healed. Mary, an unwed 14-year-old Jewish girl, faithfully opened her heart to God 
to listen and to obey. She became the Theotokos, the God-bearer, the mother of God. At the time of Jesus' birth, Mary was an immigrant, considered an unclean and lowly woman. She was a sinner who had broken the laws, and by all customs of her times, she could have been stoned to death. Yet we celebrate this faithful woman and the unexpected way our Lord incarnate Jesus was born into this world to fulfill the prophecy of the Hebrew Bible. The Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord and Savior was born this day in a stinky stable where animals were kept and the baby was wrapped in cloth and put in a watering trough for animals. An unexpected setting for the King of Kings, an unexpected place for God to show up. And Joseph, as the betrothed of Mary, a faithful Jewish man, he follows the words and images of his dreams. There's no recorded words from his lips found in the Bible. Yet his actions are faithful loving, and humble. He became an unexpected servant to the Lord, the protector of the most vulnerable and fragile, Mary and Jesus. Mary and Joseph accepted the words of God on their heart. I love you. The shepherds and the angels accepted those words and they were drawn to this unexpected place to witness God's promise become flesh. And in unexpected ways, their hearts were broken open in the love of our Lord to receive the words this Christmas morning, I love you. On this Christmas morn, I need to hear those ancient words. I need to close my eyes and hold that beautiful baby wrapped in swaddling cloth. I need to feel that little head on my heart. Don't you need Jesus and that promise of love too? I need to let go and be humbled and be loved by God. I need to let the tears flow like rivers down my cheeks. I need to let go of the struggles, and I need to place them in the manger beside that wee babe. I need to say yes when there's a knock on the end door, my heart, and let God come in. I need him to break my heart open and let the light and hope pour in. The struggles of this year have been tough as we've entered a year of COVID. There's fatigue and uncertainty. Will there ever be peace and reconciliation? The struggles of so many unjust systems. I have so many fears and hurts. I need all the darkness of my soul in the world around me to be released, to have my heart cracked open so that light and love can pierce my soul and I can be bathed in the love of our Lord and Savior. I need the love of God and the head of Christ resting on my heart. Henry Nowen wrote, a part of us clings to our aloneness and does not allow God to touch us where we are most in pain. Often we hide from God when we feel guilty, ashamed, confused, lost, or hurt. We do not give God a chance and we feel alone. There are times when I close my heart off to God, yet in prayer, I am reminded that I have seen in my world 
and experienced God showing up in unexpected places. I have seen the nativity story in action. It came alive and God does show up in the most unexpected of places. If our Lord made flesh can appear in an unclean stable to a lowly ordinary woman during a time her homeland was occupied by the Romans, a time of fear, unjust systems and violence, God will appear to us too. In that moment that God appears, the darkness will be overcome and light will shine through and generation after generation will know the hope and love of our triune God. On this Christmas morning, close your eyes, hold that sweet baby Jesus in your arms. When you feel a knock on the door of your heart, don't be like that innkeeper and turn away the Holy Family, our God. Instead, open up the doors of your heart. Let your heart be cracked open and feel the head of baby Jesus softly laying on your chest. Remember, God shows up in unexpected places, in unclean and shabby places, in wealthy and ordinary places. Don't close the door to the love of Christ when you feel the knock. You are not too broken or too shabby or too rich or too poor. Open up the door of your heart and allow the love to bathe you and mend your soul. Christ has come. Receive the good news. God is saying to you this morning, I love you. Rejoice. Do not be afraid. I love you. Have a blessed and happy Christmas. Amen. Let us join our voices as we proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from God, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Come, let us adore Christ the Lord. Let us pray, glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. Make our hearts joyful, strengthen your church with humility and faith that we might triumph over the power of evil. Glorious Lord, 
grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. You love those who are simple and those who are lowly. Shine your light on all the world and the nations may look upon your truth and find their salvation. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Grant Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. May all your creation burst forth in your songs of praise. May all the works of your hands glorify you. You may add your own thanksgiving at this time. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. Summon the people of the community to yourself. May all the distractions and heartache of our lives fade away in the joy of your presence. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. You love us so dearly. Grant your healing grace to sinners, to those who are materially poor, and to those who are in need of love. Open your arm to those who are sick and to those who are lonely. You may add your own petitions at this time. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Christ the Lord, we humbly adore you. All glory be given to you. You blessed our earthly bodies with your birth, and you promised to raise us to a new life by your death and resurrection. Glorious Lord, grant us your peace. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Merry Christmas. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.
the people of All Saints, which you and your family, a very Merry Christmas. And pray that the joy of this season will brighten your heart and lift your spirit and inspire you to be people who spread that joy. Amen.